I've been inspired by the plastic wrap texture. Let's create it in After Effects. So I am going to break this into four steps today. First, I'm going to create a fractal noise layer and show you the basic setup for this effect. Then I'll show you some varying effects you can use to customize your fractal noise layer. Then we'll make it into an overlay and add some effects to really refine and personalize it to your project. And finally, I will show you how to integrate it with your background elements. All right, I am in my example composition and the first thing I wanna do is create a new layer and name it, press OK. And then I just want to pre-compose, so I'm gonna right click, pre-compose, and I'm gonna name it again, and press OK. I'm just gonna jump inside this layer, and I'm gonna come over to Effects and Presets, search for the Fractal Noise Effect. Drag that effect onto our layer. So if I come over here and just look at some examples of plastic wrap, we can see we've got lots of thin lines, um, a few curves, which we are going to try and emulate as well. But for now, I'm just gonna start trying to create those black and white thin lines. So in our fractal noise effect, I'm gonna to come to fractal type and go to rocky and change the noise type to block. And that's going to start bringing in some straight lines that we can work with. To make it more black and white, we can use the contrast and brightness to do this. So I'm just going to uh, adjust these numbers a little bit. We can make our blocks look a little bit more solid just by adjusting this complexity. I don't want to keep it square, so if we go into transform and just uncheck this uniform, we can start scaling it, drawing it out so we can start getting some lines. I can adjust the height as well so it's a little bit thinner. So this is looking good, but it's a little bit too uniform for me. We've got lots of almost just rectangles. So if we come into our sub settings, we can start adding some kind of layers of complexity and different scaling. So for example, adjusting the influence kind of adds some more shapes in there. And adjusting the sub scaling, we're actually gonna be zooming in a lot, but that's gonna be making these whites and blacks a lot more randomly shaped. And you can also play with the rotation if you want as well. And maybe you're liking what you're seeing, but you just want to kind of move something over a little bit. You can adjust the sub offset numbers to do just that. And you can also use the rotation to change how it looks a little bit. Right, we have achieved step one, which is making our fractal layer. Now we are going to start adding some effects. And the goal for me is to start adding a little bit of curves into our layer. So one way that we could do this would be to add a wave warp. So come over to effects and presets and type that in. Drag this onto our layer. And this isn't really looking very naturally <laughs> wavy to me. So I'm gonna change the wave type to circle and just adjust these height and width settings. We can drag this way out. Uh, now, if you want to animate this, you could adjust the wave speed. You could also be making keyframes with your stopwatches on your fractal layer. I don't want it to move, so I'm just gonna change this to zero. So that's added a little bit of curves in. Another way that we could create some uneven texture is to use the liquify. Drop that onto your layer. It basically just makes a really melted look. So I just usually make the brush size 180, the pressure 80, and just kind of have at it with the tools. So I ended up using the pucker tool. This is what I have ended up with. I am going to move on to step three, but I will swing back here at the very end and show you some more effects that you can use to create some different textures within this fractal. But let's just move on for now. Jumping back into my main composition where I started, it does not look any different right now. And that is because our fractal noise layer is sitting on the top. And to fix this, I'm just gonna change the mode on this layer to linear dodge. And that has given us some transparency. Okay, so let's just add a couple more more effects to this layer. So in effects and presets, we can find the emboss effect. So this emboss is highlighting the edges of our layer and adding some height to them. But I don't wanna get rid of the blacks and whites that we've worked really hard putting together. So I'm just going to blend with original again up to about 62 is fine. Just bringing those blacks and grays back in and adjusting the relief and contrast, which is giving a really interesting kind of transparent look in itself. Back over to effects and presets, I'm going to drop the levels effect onto our layer. We're just going to adjust the blacks and the whites here and just kind of like brighten the lights and darken the shadows. I don't want to really see any of this gray so we can see right through to our text on the other side. So looking back at these examples, we can see that our highlights are super bright and I want to emulate this and to do it, I am going to use the glow effect. 
This effect kind of looks complicated, it's not really. I really only ever use the threshold, radius and intensity. The threshold is controlling where of the layer it is going to glow, radius is how far out and the intensity is how bright. Jumping back to effects and presets again, I'm going to grab the CC glass effect. This is really going to make this effect. Um, now under surface we want to make sure that we've got the fractal noise layer selected and basically I'm just going to adjust these softness, height and displacement numbers until I'm happy. Now if you wanted to you could actually go into the light and shading options of CC glass and adjust some reflective properties and shading within that effect itself. I just don't love doing it in that effect. Maybe I'm just a little stuck in my ways, I don't know. But just letting you know the option is there if you wanted to give it a go. So in order to demonstrate just how different this can look, this is the image I think that I will be using in the thumbnail. If we jump into the fractal on this layer, it looks completely different. Um, this will be included in the free download project file if you want to take a proper look through the effects and how it was done. But so these are the numbers for the fractal. I used a warp effect and also just changed the scale and rotation down below. And then on the top, this was the settings that I used up top here. Um, I'm not going to go into this too much because if you want to have a really close look at it, you can download the project file. As I said, it's totally free. Yeah, so that's example one. Second example here, you can see I've actually got some large curves on this texture and I'm achieving this with the twirl effect over here. Um, if I adjust this angle that it will actually spin all the way around and I've actually created some very interesting bumps along this plastic texture and I've done this with the warp tool as well but on the wave warp we've used the wave type triangle instead of circle. Just one more thing for integrating your plastic into whatever image you are using and that is you want to make sure to put a CC glass on your text as well. I, I think I copied and pasted it from my fractal noise and completely lowered the height. If I bring this up it's going to um, be really cool looking but not what I want. So yeah, uh, don't forget to do that. It will just add one more step of realism for your project. This effect really is so versatile. I really do love fractal noise. You can use it for so much. So if you like it too and want to see what else you can do, click this video right here and I'll see you in the next one.